These are the plaintiffs, Pete and Jennifer. Pete says he and his girlfriend Jennifer were moving in together, and they hired the defendant to move their two apartments into their new place. Unfortunately, he broke numerous things. Dented walls, broke a door, and the defendant refuses to reimburse them for the $4,251.39 they're owed. That's why they're suing him. This is the defendant, Allah Harrison. He says the only mishap his movers had on this job was a slightly scratched wall, which he offered to take care of with the plaintiffs, but they refused. He claims the plaintiffs are lying about these damages in order to extort money from him. He's accused of wrecking the joints. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $1,115.86, the balance due on the moves. All parties, please raise your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket. The plaintiffs hired a moving company, and they say this company damaged their stuff something awful. Now, now the defendant is saying the plaintiffs are trying to extort them for things order. they didn't do. It's the case of you, you don't this. move me. Okay, Pete and Jennifer, you guys decided to move in together, move from your respective apartments, and uh, move into a joint apartment, and you hired the defendant's company to do the move, correct? Let me talk to you, Pete, directly, because I think, according to you, you had hired them before, right? I hired, the, I hired them to move me from uh, my apartment in West Hollywood to the new home in Malibu on the 1st of December. Uh, and then I subsequently hired them to move my girlfriend Jennifer on the 22nd of December from her home in Burbank to this home in Malibu. Right, but you had hired uh, that company years earlier, is that right? I think at, at several, several years before, I believe. Okay, and were you happy with your experience several years before? Yes. All right, so you hired them, and when do you first realize that damage has happened? Let's talk uh, about your move. Me. Was there anything? Let's first talk about your move. Was there anything damaged in your move? Yes. Uh, in my move, there was a chip taken from a wall as they moved things in, I guess. And then there was some heavy damage to the frame of the door that leads from the garage into the home. In addition okay. to that, they uh, also so, but broke this is a, cer it, is a this ceramic in the base. New home? This is in the new home. Okay. Did you see them damage it? Uh, I did not see them actually damage it. I noticed the damage while they were moving and pointed the damage out to them, uh, both to the garage frame and to the chip in the wall. And you as pointed well that out to who? To the movers that were here. I think a person named Alex and I think another person, I think his name was uh, Avgard or, or no, it was Eugene. I think his name was okay. Eugene. They also broke a ceramic okay. vase uh, moving from my apartment. Uh, they, they broke it at the apartment as they moved from my apartment to Malibu. Do you have a picture of the ceramic vase? Uh, I don't know. They, it, it smashed into pieces, and okay. I didn't take pictures of Do you of have it Alex, uh, Mr. – how do I pronounce your name? Harishan? Harishan. Harishan. Do you have – Is uh, you weren't – you're the owner of the company, correct? Yes, correct. Were you physically on the scene during the moves or no? No, I was not. All right. Um, this gentleman he's referring to named Alex, is he a witness? Do you have him here to testify? Yes, he is here with me. Okay, can I talk to him? Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Hello. Hi, uh, what's your name? My name is Alexander, but you can call me Alex. I will call you Alex, thank you. Douglas, can you swear him in? Yes, ma'am. Raise your right hand, please. Yes. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yes. Your Honor. Okay. All right, sir, so you were at the move. Did he show you damage to the garage door and point it out to you during the move? Yeah, he told me about uh, this damage in his new house. And he showed it to you? Yeah, he showed it me. Okay. And did he also show you damage to the corner of the wall? Yes, but he said, don't worry about this uh, small uh, crack on the corner of the wall because uh, he has a handyman person who gonna uh, fix this. If they okay, okay with that, uh, or let me just you ask you, what about the garage door? Because he wasn't okay with the garage door. He showed you the damage to the garage door. Let's get a picture of that because that's pretty substantial. That's not a small uh, damage. The garage the, door is yeah. I I said to him we didn't do this because it's so hard to make it. 
this frame is a metal frame and uh, you can see it's like a tree impact. I said my guys and me we didn't do this. What did do it? How did that happen? Something hit it? I don't know. Okay, let me hear from the owner, <laughs> Mr. Harishen. Tell me something. Um, he tells you about this damage pretty quickly because I know he brings it up to Alex. So he tells you about it and he's very upset. And what do you do? You conduct an internal investigation. How many movers did you have on that scene that day? Three guys. So at some point you speak to the three guys and what happens? Everybody says, wasn't me, that they didn't hit the garage door? When a claim arrives, we would investigate and, and ask each mover who was there. Yeah, but if, all right, but if I was a mover who did it, I wouldn't have an incentive to tell you about it. You're my boss. I don't want to get fired. Like, how, wh let me ask you a question, Mr. Uh, Pete. There's some walkthrough that happened before this, uh, before you moved in. And in that walkthrough, you list everything wrong with the place. And one of the things he didn't list was this, because this wasn't there then. So it seems to me it probably happened during a move. Now, you say, according to you, what was damaged? Let's go through it, because he's right. You know, there are places where you say it's at least $500 worth of damages. Then, in a review, you say it's at least $1,000 worth of damages. And now you've come into court asking for $4,000 worth of damages. So it is kind of frustrating. You're going to have to prove up your damages. Understood. I had estimates. I had estimates done beforehand. I did not. I based my estimates, my own personal estimates, for example, of the garage frame based on a frame that I found at Home Depot. I then had a contractor come in and give me a bona fide estimate, somebody who's local. Uh, and they came up with a $1,500 estimate for the garage entry frame. But it's they just also, a metal frame around a door. Why would it be $1,500? According to them, it's more than that because it's not just the frame. You'll see that the area behind the frame is dented. I'm just, I'm just providing their estimate as to yeah, how but are much you blowing it takes it up? to fix it. Are you blowing it it's up? Not, because it, it sounds like it's a little blown up. Let me ask you a question. Should, which, um, which document, which vendor is the one? Would be the, would be the contractor. Okay, thank you. Give me one moment. Okay, that's just typewriting on a piece of paper, pumpkin. There's not even a signature, and there's certainly not letterhead on that. I understand. Yeah, that's not going to hold up in court. You're out of your mind. And what happens, Douglas, when people don't give me proof of what something costs? Oh, are we back to rough justice again? Yeah, don't you feel like you say that all the time? I say that quite a bit. All right, let me ask you a question. Let's go back to, and let's go to the list of things you think they did, they did wrong, Mr. Pete. You say that in your girlfriend's, actually, I really should be asking Ms. Jennifer, you are saying that in your apartment, a door was cracked because someone left the deadbolt open, and I guess slammed, you, it's not just that they left the deadbolt open, and then they have to slam the door to get that kind of a crack. Let's get that picture up. Um, so this is the crack in this old door from your Burbank apartment, right, Ms. Jennifer? Yeah, in my and condo. what did your landlords keep for that? They kept how much? $2,203. Yeah. Are you, are you kidding me? Can I see proof of that? Let me see how they kept 2200 and whatever dollars. Let me see it. That's in a letter that we submitted along with their, their uh, contractor. Who I thought it was outrageous, from. too. It's it is from outrageous. My landlord. Yeah, I thought it was right. outrageous, too. And it's too. outrageous, but you you fold it over, and then you want to collect from him. But the measure of damage no, is if you can over. prove that he she... did it. No, well, you didn't fight your landlord and say absolutely I, not and I go to court. I did send her you? a letter. No, not in court. And then what happened? Did you demand the money uh, to get she... paid back to you? No, you let it run. No, she sent me a letter saying that her cost, and she sent me an estimate of everything she spent to get the yeah, door Yeah, I fixed. know, but it's nonsense. This is an old door. It has a crack in it. The idea that that's $2,000 is utter nonsense. It didn't have a crack before. It didn't no, have a crack No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about whether the door's worth $2,000, if you could prove they did it. You understand? Right. So I'm going to assume for the purposes of our debate that they did it. I'm going to assume they took the deadbolt, opened it, and then banged it over and over. Let's assume that, okay? I think the wind That door is not worth $2,000. And okay. when you go to court, you're entitled to reasonable damages, not damages that are made up by another landlord, you know, that are completely in the stratosphere. It's insanity. Now, 
Let, uh, did your guys keep that deadbolt open, and is that how that cracked? Because she's positive it wasn't there before. When I interviewed our mowers, they answered me that none of them has extended the deadbolt. And this is not our normal practice to extend the deadbolt. Otherwise, we would have these claims every day. So, uh, according to your movers, they did. What's your policy? Your policy is to use door stops, I imagine. Do door stoppers, but in this case, the door stood open by itself. Okay, let's look at the picture. Uh, let's go now, Mr. Pete, to the closet door. I think that's the only thing. And oh, actually, in the corner of the wall damage. Uh, let's see, let's see. Closet door, Nick. I have it up now. Is that the closet door, Nick? Yes. Which apartment is that in? That's that would be at in my Burbank. condo. The Jennifer's condo. Why would they be inside your... Is that the door itself? Because uh, do you have a picture when from you further come back? In, or? When you come in the front door, there's a closet right there. So when the door, uh, front door hit, it hit the closet door. What did your condo association charge you for that? It was $219.35. For a whole new door or to repair it? No, just, just to repair, just to repair that damage. Two nineteen thirty-five for that. Okay. And I know you guys are going to say we didn't do it, but it looks like something that happens when you're moving, for, you know, furniture, that, you know, because it's the way that it's ripped, uh, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, this uh, Mr. is uh, something Harris? that our guys, our guys mentioned that they did uh, small scratches and uh, they did uh, In the her damage, apartment? Uh, at her apartment, they yes. mentioned. Okay, let me talk to you, Mr. Pete. When I look through your pleadings, I see that you want $201 for a vase, but you have no picture of a broken vase. You want $219 for the closet door. We just talked about you. that. You want um, $1,983 for the front door replacement, which is the front door of her place, because that's what the landlord kept. Doesn't that seem a little fishy to you too, Pete? That they would keep $2,000 for a 30-year-old wooden door? Even if you went to a custom Judge, builder, it wouldn't cost that. It's nonsense. Act, Judge, actually, it, that's exactly what she had to do. Her, the HOA required that the door match all the other doors in the complex. And the landlord okay, tried to go to Okay, but let me ask you this. How are you going to prove that they're the ones who cracked it? How can you pin it on them that they're the ones who cracked it? How are you going to do that? Welcome back to the People's Court. Will the plaintiffs get money for the damage to their stuff? Or did the defendants prove that the plaintiffs are nothing but spiteful and greedy? Let's go back into the courtroom. None of us extended the extended the deadbolt and we pointed out the crack in the door. Well, they to say them they didn't they either. Left. So then I've got the, the same proof you shut. did it as I have that they did it. Everybody says they didn't do it. So how are you going to prove yeah, the door by a preponderance before. of the evidence that they, well, don't talk over me? How are you going to prove by a preponderance of the evidence that they broke that? All I can prove, all I can say, I can't prove it. All I can say is that the deadbolt was extended and the wind slammed the door shut, and that is what cracked the door. And I did not okay. do it. And you Jennifer say did you not didn't extend it, extend and, it, and, it, and they say did. they didn't extend it either. Everybody says they didn't extend it. So how are you going to prove that they extended it? You didn't see them extend it. You didn't see the damage happen. Okay, I, let's well, talk now about, after. in your counterclaim, you're suing for $545 for five extra hours of work. Where was the five extra hours of work? Well, uh, this uh, uh, unpack service, the booking service, they required to list, um, they required to list every piece of furniture that uh, they want to move and prepay the move. When we came to their place, uh, there was twice more of furniture, and we uh, prove that still because moved I it. don't see you. Just a second. Then that means that you need to have a new, a new contract done at that time. I mean, I've moved a hundred times. I know exactly how that works. If you go there and it's twice as much furniture because they were trying to scam, then you say, whoa, 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 that you have twice as much furniture. You do a new contract. Did you do a new contract? We actually signed an additional list of items that Pete wanted to move, and he okay. uh, approved it, that he wants to okay. move these items. Okay, may I items see that? Hold on, on. Of hold on. Plan. Show me, show me where that is. What is, show me the piece of paper so I can find what you're saying. Did you give that in evidence? Yes. It looks like this. And there is a okay. signature too. And, okay, so you did sign for extra items, right? Not in, I'm looking no, at not your signature at the beginning, the extra ma'am. They 
they brought all of that I don't that care about the beginning. The Did you sign completed? for extra stuff that needed to be moved? Yes or no? Is that yes, your signature yes. right here? Yes. So it was that, more than what you, it was I got too it. much stuff. I was moving from a one bedroom apartment. So I don't know where I they don't came care. up with all the extra stuff. I don't stuff. care whether you regret signing. I care that you signed. You see, I don't care if you thought it through now and you wish you hadn't signed. I'm not going to debate with you how much furniture fits in a one bedroom. I want to know whether or not you had agreed to the other charges. Okay, so we have the vase that you're suing for. We have the closet door that you're suing for, which they admit. We have the front door replacement, which I don't think you have enough proof of. We have the corner wall, which they admit. Do you have, where do I find the receipt for $334 for the corner wall? Did you send that in? That is the same, that's the same estimate that you discounted because it was not a letterhead. Well, it's just typed on a, okay. So I, I need to estimate the damages myself on that one. Give me one second to take a look at it again. That's this one, right? Yes. Okay. So, and the garage frame. You know, I don't know, when, when you say we didn't do it, I don't know what else but a major move would do it. He's got the evidence where he never listed that as a problem with the place. I'm just finding it really hard to believe that that doesn't happen during a move. I think they've proven that that happened during a move. I just also don't think that the metal framing around it would be $1,983. I think that amount is ridiculous. Um, I am going to estimate what I think is appropriate for that. And so I find that there's $919.35 in damages. But on the counterclaim, we have to talk about the counterclaim, okay? So there's extra moving that you did authorize. Did you ever bill him for the extra hours that you're talking about, that $545? Did you ever bill him for those extra hours? We try to bill him through Unpack service. That's what we're supposed to do by the agreement with Unpack uh, uh, website. And uh, they refused to cover these hours because... They refused the uh, whole Pete, thing. Right. The, Go ahead. The Pete didn't pay initial uh, uh, payment. He paid only $60 or so for I the first month. paid 10 percent they required me to pay. Right. I got it, guys. All right. Here's what we got. We got these cross claims between you guys. You say they did all this in damages. You say they owe me money. You're right. They owe you money. And you're right. I am finding in your favor in some of the damages. When I add up the money that, you're, that you know you haven't paid for the move, it's $1,115.86. That's what you are still owed. But when I add up the damages that I believe should go, should, they should be compensated for, I come up with $919.35. So when I deduct that from the money they owe you, I find that on these cross claims, there will be a net judgment in favor of the defendant in the amount of $196.50. That is my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Your Honor. So let's talk to Pete and Jennifer, the plaintiffs in this case. You know, you were suing for $4,200. What do you think about the, uh, the judge's decision? Not Obviously, happy. <laughs> we're, not, we're not pleased. Um, and um, just because we didn't... I didn't have something on letterhead doesn't mean that the, the estimate is valid. And as I pointed out during the proceedings, the deadbolt did not, did not get extended by itself. Uh, it was extended by them. The wind slammed the door shut and it caused the damage. So I'm sorry that she made the decision uh, that you're upset with, but that's the judge's verdict and there's not much you can do about it now. You know, I want to ask you a quick question. How's life in Malibu? Life is pretty Crazy. good here. We live across the street from the beach, and uh, and we're doing well, and we love our new home. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Sorry you didn't win. Let's talk to the uh, the defendant now, Mr. Harrison. Sir, you, you're not getting much money, but hey, almost $200. It's better than nothing. What are, What is your reaction? Uh, I want to thank you, Judge, for the uh, uh, right decision, and uh, I want to say that uh, we didn't do those big damages. We did small yeah. uh, scratch one or two, so this is what it is. Uh, that's the nature of the business. Well, we understand. Well, thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay. Now, let's join Judge Millian and her husband, Judge John, for another edition of After the Verdict. Well, Marilyn, a lot to unpack with this particular <laughs> uh, lawsuit. And uh, if you're like me, when those movers come to your house to get you in or out of an apartment or a home, 
you're on pins and needles and you're just all the time waiting to hear something break I'm waiting or see to something, hear something break, break and, you, right? and you can't be what you know what you really would like to do is watch them every single second right because i i just like i'm doom and gloom i mean i just assume everything's going to go wrong uh, right. that can and so uh, whenever I, i've used movers i've always been right on them all the time but it's almost impossible right honestly i think maybe what you should do is get a videographer like you do for weddings when when have them just <laughs> and do the them, whole thing i know but you may need Shoot. three videographers because yeah. there's three guys i mean They're it's just impractical you can't got to go yeah. on faith but um you know maybe the thing to do is to video your apartment soup to nuts super super slowly every little part of it so that when a damage happens, you can say, hey, look, I videoed that. Right. That wasn't there before you got here. That might be the only way to be able to prove that the damage right. happened during the move. Right. Well, you compensated them for what you thought was fair. Right. And they still right. owed that man a lot of money. Yeah. So. So, Toll, I have to tell you, this is a little bit tricky. Um, Number one, you need to tell your ex. Give your ex a date certain. Pick your mail up by a certain date or else. Give him a reasonable amount of time. The problem is do not destroy his mail. That's for sure because that's a federal crime. So do not destroy his mail. What I would do if I were you, and I know this is a little bit of a pain, you might either take it to the post office um, or you could leave it for the mail carrier to pick it up if your mail carrier picks up mail at your home but do not destroy it. Um, and <laughs> I guess for your boyfriend, good riddance.